Okay, in this video I'm going to be looking at the exam number two from last spring and uh, I have the solution in front of me and right now I've got problem number one uh, showing and in just a second I'm going to read the problem and what I would do is encourage you to try hard to work this problem all by yourself to gauge how you're doing so stop the movie um, after I finish reading the problem and you try to work it and then when you've tried hard enough come back and take a look at the solution so this one says we have a 2000 kilogram car traveling along a curved road as described by the equation r is equal 50 e raised to the 2 theta powered where r is measured in meters and theta is measured in radians if a camera is located at point a and it rotates with angular velocity of theta dot equal 0.05 and theta double dot equal 0.01 at the instant theta equal pi over 6 radians determine the resultant friction force developed between the tires and the road at this instant and so the camera is located at the origin of a cylindrical coordinate system and so you're asked to develop to calculate the friction between the tires and the road at this point I suggest you pause the movie uh, and try to work the problem yourself I'm gonna give a three second countdown and then I'm gonna start uncovering the solution and talk about it three two one and here's the solution and I will go over it of course first of all clearly a cylindrical coordinates problem and we are asking for the force between the tires and the road now the force between the tires and the road could come for two reasons there could be a normal direction force between the tires and the road there could be a tangent direction force between the tires and the road but in the end it doesn't really matter where the forces come from as long as we account for all of it and so there also could be radial direction forces and theta direction forces between the tire and the road. As long as we know the total acceleration, it doesn't matter how we calculate the forces. So what we need is the total acceleration. So we were given that theta is pi over 6. We were told that theta dot is 0.05. And we were told that theta double dot is a 0.01. That was given in the problem statement. Also given in the problem statement was the fact that R is of the shape of the curve is 50 e to the 2 theta. Plugging in theta equal pi over 6 gives us 142.48 meters. Then we need R dot, which means we'll take the derivative of R with respect to time. And we can do that by taking dr d theta d theta dt. And so the derivative of 50 e to the 2 theta with respect to theta is 50 e to the 2 theta times 2 or that would be 100 e to the 2 theta 100 e to the 2 theta but that would be dr d theta to get dr dt we have to multiply by theta dot so we insert the theta dot right there plugging in the values of theta and theta dot that were given we get 14.25 meters per second then finally we need to take the derivative of r dot with respect to time to get r double dot and since we have two terms involving theta which change with time a theta dot and a two theta we have to use the product rule and so we'll just leave the 100 out of it and then this term will give us a theta double dot e to the two theta theta double dot e to the two theta and then we will get a theta dot multiplying the derivative of e to the two theta with respect to time which is 2 e to the 2 theta theta dot so we're going to get another 2 out of the term we're going to get another theta dot out of the term and we'll have the e to the 2 theta so that's the chain rule product rule at work you can do that and then plugging in the all of the uh, thetas and derivatives we get an r double dot of 4.27 meters per second squared at this point we have enough information when we go to the equation sheet and get our cylindrical coordinates acceleration to calculate the radial piece of acceleration and calculate the theta piece of acceleration plugging in the r information and the theta information 
we get a radial acceleration of 3.91. We get a theta direction acceleration of 2.85. Now to deal with friction, we need from F equal MA, we'll need the total acceleration. And so the total acceleration we'll get when we Pythagorize these two because they are at right angles. Do not simply add those together. And so force is equal to mass, 2,000 kilogram car, times the acceleration we get when we Pythagorize those two. And so the force of 9.68 kilonewtons, okay, um, would be the friction force between the tires and the road. And that would end this problem. Let me carefully expose the next problem without revealing too much. Okay, this one's easy. <clears throat> Probably zoom in just a touch. Make it a touch easier to read. Okay. What we have is a pole vaulter. A pole vaulter is carrying a uniform 16 foot, 10 pound pole, and they approach the jump with a running velocity, um, let's see, V, and we'll, we don't know that yet. And they barely manage in the process of doing the pole vaulting to clear the bar that's set at a height of 18 feet. Okay. As he clears the bar, his velocity and that of the pole are essentially zero. Calculate the minimum possible value of V required for him to make the jump. Both the horizontal pole and the center of gravity of the vaulter are at 42 inches above the ground during the approach. Okay, again, I suggest you attempt to work this problem on your own. Uh, spend 10 or 15 minutes with it, pause the video, and then uh, come back and either find out what you weren't able to do or find out that you did it right. So I'm going to expose and start talking about the solution in three seconds. So three, two, one. Okay, I hope you paused it. And so let's talk about the solution. This problem would be really there's no other way to work this problem nicely without knowing the details of the bending and the springiness of this pole without knowing those details we have no hope of working it other than work energy and it's clearly work in energy because we have velocity information we have height information we have distance information but we don't have time so momentum is not going to be helpful in this one uh, chapter 13, sum of forces isn't helpful because we don't know what to say about the pole, but energy will get the job done. And so we just simply have to account for all of the energy terms. And let me zoom out just a little bit. Okay. And in this case, we have a conser conservation of energy. We have no external work. We have no friction to worry about. So we have the energy of the man and the pole both kinetic and potential and up here we have energy of man and pole should be potential only all right so starting off the problem t1 plus v1 equal t2 plus v2 would be our conservation conservation of energy equation and initially we have one half mv squared kinetic energy of both the mass of the man and the pole they're both traveling at the same speed, and it's the unknown speed. And if we were to set uh, gravitational potential at the ground, it's probably a little bit easier to do that. Then we would have the mass of the pole, uh, sorry, the mass of the man, or the pole vaulter, and the mass of the pole times g times h, and that h would be 42 inches divided by 12 to get it into feet. And then that would take care of the left side of the equation. On the right-hand side of the equation, we were told to assume everything had zero velocity, so T2 is equal to zero. And what we have on this side of the equation is V2 of the man and V2 of the pole, but their heights are different now <clears throat> because um, 
the man will be up at the full height of 18, but the pole being 16 feet long and standing straight up and down will have its center of gravity at a height of 8. And so we have, after all of our, what I would call engineering accounting work going on, accounting for all the energy, we have a one equation, one unknown problem. V is the only unknown in the problem. We do have to plug in things properly, including masses involving a 175 pound man and 10 pound pole. We've got to divide by 32.2. Have to convert the 42 inches into feet. Everything else very straightforward. And we find out that we the man has a velocity of 30 feet per second or 20.4 miles per hour. And that would be the second problem on this exam. Let me uh, carefully reveal the third problem without showing the solution. Get a few things in place here. That'll work. Let's zoom in a bit. Okay. What we have is a truck going down a hill. Okay. And a trailer connected to the truck. So the problem says the hydraulic braking system for the truck and trailer is set to produce equal braking forces for the two units. Two units being truck and trailer. If the brakes are applied uniformly for five seconds to bring the rib rig to a stop from a speed of 20 miles per hour down the 10% grade, determine the force P in the coupling between the trailer and the truck. Is the coupling force P in tension or in compression? The truck weighs 20,000 pounds and the trailer weighs 15,000 pounds. Okay, and so again, I'm going to give a three second countdown. And then I'm going to expose the solution. Before I uh, expose the solution, I suggest you pause the video, work this problem yourself, see how you're doing, uh, and then uh, come back and compare the answer. Now, let me uh, suggest this. I didn't give this quit this test. Another faculty did. If I were going to give this test, I would put on here. Okay. Uh, that I want you to use chat. I want you to use impulse momentum on this one. That I don't want you to work this as a purely F equal MA kind of problem. Now, if you've got normal forces, friction, that kind of thing, sure, F equal MA is fine. But in the downhill direction, I want you to use impulse momentum, not F equal MA. So try the problem that way. Three, two, one. Okay, and now I'm exposing the solution. Hopefully, you have already spent time working on the problem. And let's see what we have here. And I will zoom out. Okay, first of all, we have some information about how the truck is behaving as a unit. So, as a unit, the brakes are applied for five seconds to bring the rig to a stop from a speed of 20 miles per hour. Okay, and so that will tell us something about overall forces in the system. And then if we want to find out what's happening, so we can treat it as an overall system. Then when we're ready to find out what's happening in the couplings, we will need to break the, the uh, bodies apart. So we expose the coupling force in our equations, and we'll be able to calculate that coupling force. Okay. And so, what we're going to say is the truck heading downhill, in the downhill direction, the entire thing is a unit, has some initial momentum, mass times velocity. The brakes will impose an impulse, force acting over time, and we don't know what that is, but they'll impose an impulse. And then we will have come to a stop in what was said uh, to be five seconds. We'll come to a stop in five seconds. We know everything about our impulse, let's see, except the force. We know our mass and velocity information. So, since we're talking about both pieces, their total mass is 15,000 plus 20,000, giving us a 35,000 total weight, dividing by 32.2 gives us the mass. 
we were traveling downhill at an initial speed of 20 miles per hour, converting that into feet per second. Okay, and then we have two different impulses acting. We have gravity acting over that 5,000 period, uh, five second period. And we don't have 100% of gravity because we are on a small slope angle. And so we have gravity times the sine of that slope angle, which is it's a very small piece of gravity propelling us downhill to the very small slope. So gravity times the sine of our slope angle, which came from the one in 10 triangle. And then our brakes are acting in the opposite direction of gravity. And so that would be a minus two times F, where F is the force in each trailer. And remember the words, it said the braking system is set to produce equal braking forces in the two units. Therefore, we will call that both F and F. This equation is one equation, one unknown, where we can solve for F, and F comes out to be 4930 pounds. That's the braking force in each of the two trailers. Now, to find the coupling force, we go to our free bodies, which divide the two units into two, each unit experiencing its own mass and weight, each unit experiencing the same braking force, and each unit experiencing the mutual coupling force one imposes on the other. And so we can look at either of the two bodies if we want to. We can look at the 15,000 pound body and learn the coupling force, or we can look at the 20,000 pound body and learn the coupling force by saying that, again, um, momentum of this body plus any impulses will bring our momentum to zero because we came to rest. And so if we look at the 15,000 pound, uh, let's see, was that the truck or the trailer? I think the 15,000, the 15,000 is the trailer. So the initial momentum of the trailer, 15,000 over 32.2 is its mass, 20 miles an hour times 88.6, taking us to feet per second, mass times velocity. Then acting on the trailer is its own weight times the sine of the angle theta. And because we're heading downhill and the trailer is behind and downhill is positive, then P is positive acting on the trailer. F is negative acting on the trailer. And we already know the value of F. P is the only unknown in this equation. And P comes out to be 704 pounds as a positive number. Therefore, uh, that uh, connection is in tension. Now, another way we can check our answer is to look at this piece of the free body diagram, which is the 20,000 pound truck unit that has both friction pulling on it, slowing it down, and the way we assumed this, and we had to draw them equal and opposite, so uh, this one will also be acting in the direction to slow it down, removing momentum or negative impulse. So. For the 20,000 pound piece, its mass times velocity gives us its starting momentum. Then we have the weight of the 20,000 part piece, uh, part, sine of theta degrees, acting in the positive direction. We already discussed P acts in the negative direction, F acts in the neg negative direction. I didn't say this in the earlier equation, but this is an impulse being integrated, but everything is constant, so it simply becomes the force multiplied by time, and the time was five in both cases. Again, in this problem, everything is known except P, because we solve for F in the earlier part, and when we solve P out of this equation, we also get 704 pounds, and we get a positive number out of it, and so we would say, from the point of view of either one, that coupler is acting in tension. That would be the third problem from the test from last semester. And let me get you ready to see the final problem. And let's zoom in. Okay, that looks pretty good. 
again I suggest you read the problem you can leave, you can pause the computer leave the uh, pictures and everything up there but try to work the problem yourself and uh, see how you do after you've worked it yourself come back and uh, take a look at the solution see how you did now this is the process I would have followed in class if I were doing a review in class I would have given you about 10 minutes with each problem to see how you could do and then we would have taken about five minutes to go over the problem solution all right in this problem a boy jumps off of a canoe at point a okay with a velocity of five meters per second relative to the canoe as shown if he lands in the second canoe C oops, let's see let's do uncover a touch ah there's the A so here is canoe A and here is canoe C and that is the boy and that is the girl at D so boy B the boy B jumps off canoe at A with a velocity of five meters per second relative to relative to the canoe as shown in the angle shown if he lands in the canoe C determine the final speed of both canoes after the motion each canoe has a mass of 40 kilograms the boys mass is 30 kilograms and the girl has a mass of 25 kilograms both canoes are originally at rest okay so uh, now notice the boy velocity of the boy with respect to the canoe is 5 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees. So I suggest that you pause the video and work this problem yourself. I'll give you a 3 second countdown to pause and then uh, I will expose the solution and discuss it. So 3, 2, 1. Welcome back. I hope you did pause the video and try to work the problem first. Let's take a look at the solution. Let's zoom out. That looks pretty good. Okay, we have a two part process. We have the boy leaving this canoe, and we're interested in the, uh, let's see, what did we actually ask for? Determine the final speed of both canoes. So we want to know the speed of this canoe. We want to know the final speed of that canoe. So let's deal with the first canoe. And we do have conservation of momentum. Any impulses that the boy imposes on the canoe are reversed and equal and opposite. So it is conservation of momentum. And we'll say the starting momentum of the system, boy and canoe, is equal to the final momentum of the system, boy and canoe. And so our starting momentum is everything at rest. The final momentum would be the mass of the canoe times the velocity of the canoe in the x direction plus the mass of the boy times the velocity of the boy in the x direction. Now, having read carefully and highlighted that dynamics word, relative, and also paid attention to that angle, We'll now deal with this relative piece because we do not know the velocity of the boy. It was not given. A relative velocity was given. So the vo velocity of the boy is the velocity of the canoe plus the velocity of the boy with respect to the canoe. All of this in the x direction. So we have the velocity of the boy in the x is equal to the velocity of the canoe, which is only in the x, plus <clears throat> the x direction velocity would involve the cosine of that 30 degrees 5 times the cosine of 30 degrees okay so we take this equation right here and we have the velocity of boy in the x in terms of VA we plug it in right here and what we have is two equations two unknowns and we solve then for the velocity of the canoe of minus 1.86 meters per second. Now taking V sub A and substitute back into either one of these equations, we get that the velocity of the boy, so that would be the second equation of the two equation two unknown set, we get the velocity of the boy in the x direction is 2.47 meters per second and that is absolute. 
that is not his relative velocity, that's his absolute velocity. And that's what we're going to need in the next piece. Okay? In the next piece, the boy will be flying through the air at the velocity of 2.47 meters per second, and he will land in the canoe, then all of and then come to rest relative to the canoe. And then his momentum would be transferred to the canoe and we'll get some rightward velocity of the boy, the girl, and the canoe. So, again, we have conservation of momentum through the process of the boy flying to the other canoe. Um, and we will so, say starting momentum. And we'll have some because the boy has momentum. Starting momentum equal final momentum. And... Our starting momentum is the mass of the boy times the velocity of boy in the x direction, which was our 2.47. And the mass and the mass of the girl and the canoe is zero. Then finally, on the at the end of the process, we have ev all of the masses combined because they're now moving at the same speed. So mass of the boy. Mass of the girl, mass of the canoe, all traveling together. The boy's momentum has turned into everybody's momentum. And taking the 2.47, putting it here, the only unknown is the velocity of the canoe, which is a positive 0.78 meters per second. So it would be moving to the right. The uh, other canoe was moving to the left. Okay, that ends my uh, review session. Um, probably if you spend about 10 minutes per problem, will have taken about an hour and 15 minutes. I will also be hosting a study hall Monday night uh, before our exam on Tuesday morning, 9 o'clock. And of course that amp exam is closed book, closed notes. But I will give you the equation sheet. So I'll see you on Monday. Have a good weekend.